Rabin, you pour forth your wisdom with mighty clarity. Father, we do thank you for we have wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of that spirit that you've so richly given to us in redemption. Father, we believe and we receive that the burden of ignorance is dematerialized to your glory. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, uh, you want to turn with me then to 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. Well, here goes. So verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What did he declare to them? The gospel, the gospel which I preached. So it says, The gospel which I preached unto you, which also, what? You have received. So what is the greatest thing that a man or woman could do to the gospel? To receive it. It says, Which you have received, and wherein you stand. So the believer's stand is in the gospel received right the believer stand yeah your confidence your assurance is in the gospel received then paul then goes on further in verse 3 remember he's describing to them or defining for them the gospel that i preached look at verse 3 for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received so Paul is saying there's a commonality between me and you guys. I received also. Hold on. Why was Paul able to preach it to them? What I also received. Look at verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also what? received. So in other words, the moment you receive the gospel, you become empowered to be a proclaimer of it. So, the, the power to preach the gospel is not separate from believing it. Okay? So let me say that differently. So, the act of believing the gospel makes you a proclaimer of the message. Said differently. Uh, there is no separate call to preach the gospel apart from the call that believed it. The believer, by the act of believing, has become set apart unto the gospel that he has believed that's quite important and phenomenal because if you uh that thessalonian text that we read together uh, before we parted ways you remember you remember thessalonians ah uh, second ah uh, second thessalonians chapter 2 well, I think we are going to like each other a lot here. So, <laughs> Second Thessalonians and chapter 2. Go there. So, keep your answer in 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. And go to Second uh, Thessalonians and chapter 2. Second Thessalonians and chapter 2. Are you there? Look at verse 13. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. It says, we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord. Look at it. For God has from the beginning chosen you. Say out loud. God has chosen me to salvation. Okay. Say it out loud again. God has chosen me to salvation. Okay. So think about this carefully. To believe the gospel then will be to accept God's choice of you. Right? So who was looking for the other? Were you looking for him or was he looking for you? He was looking for you. Then you heard that he had been looking for you. And when you heard he had been looking for you, you chose his choice. Or you accepted his choice of you. Okay? Now this is what is funny. Although God chose you, it is not like God asks some people he doesn't choose. But the difference is in the person chosen or the person that hears that God has chosen him, does that person respond? Right? It's like this. You, you could, uh, you could, uh, hmm. let me go there. 
Second Thessalonians and chapter 2. Right? And the verse, I wanted to say really, you could like somebody all you like, all you want. If the person doesn't like you back, you know it's feel somehow. <laughs> if you've not been there, you don't need to be there. There's nothing good about it. Yeah? To like somebody and then the person doesn't like you back. Now, that's the way it is with God and salvation. God has chosen people, but the people have not accepted God's choice of them. Yeah? So, it's, so one leg of salvation is God has chosen, but God's choosing is not he excludes some. It is people that exclude what God has chosen. Now, so in 2 Thessalonians and chapter 2 verse 13, we are bound to give thanks always. To God for you, brethren, the Lord of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through what? Through what? Sanctification of the Spirit. Let me have your attention. What kind of salvation did God provide? The one where he does it through the sanctification of the Spirit. Let me say it differently. There is only one kind of salvation in God. And that is the type where he sanctifies you, not by your actions, not by your performance, but by the Spirit. So, who is the sanctifier? You or God? God. What is my part? To accept the sanctification. How do I accept? Somebody must tell me. Who tells me? The preacher. So the preacher tells me, then I hear it, and then I believe it. And what has happened then is I have received his sanctification. His sanctification is his work, what he did, where I'm concerned. So it says here in verse 13, through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the what? Truth. Of the truth. So who does the believing? I do. Who does the sanctification? The spirit does. So the spirit of God sanct the spirit of God sanctifies. Who does the spirit of God sanctify? The one that believes. So the believing, my responsibility. The performance, God's responsibility. The sanctification, God's responsibility. So we can say it this way: that the person that is saved can also be said to be what? Sanctified by the Spirit. So the person that is saved can be said to be what? Sanctified by the Spirit. Sanctified simply means to, to hold as sacred. In other words, you are sacred to God. Right? You are, you know, there's this song. Uh, uh, this is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. Yeah? Yeah? Now, in God's eyes, you are holy ground. You are sacred territory. Now, you don't feel you look that way. Or you don't think you look that way. But it's the fact of the gospel. The sanctification, the sacredness of the, of the spirit. So the spirit of God. Think about it this way so you get the point. Uh, what was it that was peculiar about that ground on which Moses stood where the bush was born in? What was, pecu what was peculiar? Was the rock formation there different? Was it the same desert as every other part of the desert? What made that ground then holy ground? God said so. What makes you holy? God said so. Right? So, the minute that God said you are holy, God, what the word sanctified means, it means you are. Now, it's not a feeling. It's fact. It's divine fact. So, the person that believes the gospel, by the act of believing the gospel, right, transfers an action to God. God's action is to sanctify you by his spirit. So, say out loud, I have been made holy. Yeah, now, why are you holy? It's the choice of God. That's, that's the way God chose it. Amen. If I have a football, and I bring the football to the playing ground, then you play the game by my rules. If you don't play by my rules, when we're much younger, you take the ball and you go back home. Then let everybody else play the game they want. <laughs> right? So, if I brought the ball, I did that. See, it is whenever I say the game is over, that the game is over. Right? And if you are whipping me too much, and I don't like what is going on, then I just simply say, I'm going home. Right? Now, the same way to salvation is not your plan. It is God's plan, on God's terms, on God's way, right, to achieve his purpose. The purpose of God is sanctifying you. Right? And the way he does it is by the Spirit. So we can say this way, I have the Spirit, therefore, I'm sanctified. Or we can say this way, uh, if I... If, uh, 
if I, if I have the spirit, then I'm said to be spiritual. Why am I spiritual? I have the spirit. Hmm? If I'm not spirit, it's like this. If I have water, I'm wet. <laughs> right? The water describes, the water determines how you describe me. The spirit of God determines how you describe the believer. He is sanctified. Now, but here's the point where I stopped the other session. It then says in verse um, 14, where unto, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, where unto he called you. What did he do? Called you. How? By, uh, 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 by our gospel. So, how does God call people? By our gospel. How, how does God call people? By our. by our gospel. Who will be the one preaching the gospel? We will. What will, who will be the one acting once I begin to preach? God. What is God using my preaching to do? To call. So, my mouth is moving, but God is acting. My mouth is moving, God is acting. Remember, what did we say the gospel was? Go back to 1 Corinthians 15, please. Where we were before. So, 1 Corinthians 15, I'm in verse uh, 3. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died. What's the gospel? How that Christ died. For what? Our sins, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to what the scriptures was the gospel christ died christ was buried and christ rose now hold your hand and go to colossians 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 and uh, colossians did i say colossians sorry ephesians we'll do it with ephesians instead ephesians in chapter 2 ephesians 2 either ephesians 2 Ephesians 2. So Ephesians 2, and I'm in verse 4. But God, somebody say God. God, God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Underline that. It doesn't say he is going to love us. It didn't say he's preparing to love us. It didn't say he's trying to decide whether to love us. It didn't say we are psyching him. He said he loved us. Why did he love us? Is that merciful? Now, so verse 4, Ephesians 2, 4, it says, uh, uh, God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, verse 5, even when we were what? We were what? We were dead in, we were dead in sins, has quickened us. The word quicken means to make alive. So, he quickened us. So, I am the recipient of a divine action. The action of God is called quickened. I am the quickened, he is the quickener. So, that means he, I am the enlivened, he is the enlivener. So, he enlivened me as an act of what? His mercy. Verse, uh, verse uh, 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has done what? Quickened us. Quickened us. Quicken us, go on. Quicken us together. together. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I'm not sure if you say that will. So, uh, quicken us is not together. Quicken us together. <laughs> what? It quickened us what? Together. How are you saying it that way? Together. How are they quicken us? Together. <laughs> yeah, so you are quickened us together with Christ. Hold on. What does it mean to quicken? To make alive. Who do you make alive? One that died. What is the gospel? Christ died. And then Christ was buried. And then Christ was raised. Here, look at what Paul said in Ephesians in chapter 2 verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together. So when Jesus was quickened, what happened? We were quickened too. Yeah, we were quickened together. So, quicken us together with Christ. And that is, what else can you say you are quicken together with Christ? By grace, you are saved. So, what does it mean to be saved by grace? Whatever made Jesus to be alive from the dead, made you alive from the dead with him too. Yeah? You didn't rise up as an assistant. 
you didn't rise up after him together together what took him out took you out but what he took out you took out too hallelujah it says it says as quickened us together now look at this uh at the six and as raised us up together how did he raise us up together you know i don't know about you if you spend all your emotions on the gospel like me you don't have enough to get angry with after some people when they read the bible hey eh, he raised me together then after what he called me an idiot he said i was an idiot <laughs> pastor i'm angry i'm angry why because you're not using your emotion rightly use your emotion for the gospel yeah what did he do he raised us <laughs> how did he raise us together. after he rose jesus did God perform two resurrections? No. no. God had one chance. If he couldn't do in that chance, he has blown it. But thank God he didn't blow it. He raised us what? Together. Together. Hold on. So is the, is the gospel that Christ rose or that you rose together with him? Hmm. Let us sink in. Is it Christ has reason? Or he raised me together with Christ. He raised me together. Remember, what is the man's primordial fear? What is man's core fear? The fear of death. What did God do? He didn't just raise Jesus and told us, look at him at him he's raised do you want to be raised to no 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 in believing the moment you believe that god raised him you are in that resurrection so what he used to remove the fear of death he used it to remove it for the fear of death to the last of us let me say it again jesus's assurance over death is your assurance too because he raised you together together it was together not one after the other it wasn't sequential it wasn't after using all his muscles he now got your turn and say oh, oh boy i don't try i don't try we don't we just have to just you have to wind me up praise me praise me funny boy praise, stand up and praise me no God doesn't need to be wound up like a spoiled engine. Mm. He had one chance. Yes. And he didn't blow it. Mm. He raised us up together. The assurance that God has given in the... Re Remember, it says God has ordained one man. By whom he will judge the world. In the resurrection. And in that resurrection, I was raised together with him. I am as alive unto God as Jesus is. I am one with him in the resurrection. I did not raise, I was not raised after. I was raised together. I am not an afterthought in redemption. I was God's original plan. I was not what God thought of afterwards. Not say, I think I can succeed. He had one chance and he succeeded with me. Together. 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 That's verse 6, Ephesians 2 and verse 6. Look at verse uh, 6 again. It's raised us up together, made us. Notice though, he didn't say we sat. We didn't even know to sit. Mm -hmm. Right? He says he made us. <laughs> is the action. He made me. He persuaded me into sitting. He says he made us to do what? Sit. What's that key word? Together. Glory to God. He made us sit together. It wasn't that Jesus uh, first sat down. And I said, who can try me? No. When he sat, that was my sitting. He sat as me. And to sit means it is done. Look at it again. Ephesians 2 and verse 6. He made us sit together in the heavenly. The word places, if you have a good Bible, is italicized. Right? In yours? Is it not? So it's not there. It was put there by our English translators who felt they were trying to do us a favor. So he made us to sit together in heavenly in 
Christ. So what is heavenly in Christ? So that which is done in Christ is said to be done in the heavens. So the heavens for us is the activity of God. What God did. What God did. What man cannot tamper with. Yeah. What he did, he did in Christ and he did in us. Yeah. He made us to do what? Sit together. Please look at 1 Corinthians and chapter 3. 1 Corinthians 3. And I'm in verse 9. I, I read verse 9. For we are. Let's go together. For we are. One more time. For we are. One more time. For we are. Go beyond after we are. What? Laborers. Stop. We are what? Laborers. What's the next word? Together. Hold on. So we were, we, we died, were crucified together. In fact, look at Galatians 2. Galatians. Galatians. Hold your hand in 1 Corinthians and chapter 3. And look at Galatians. Are you there? Yeah. Are you in Galatians? Galatians in chapter 2. I'm in verse 20. You there? Are you there? Yeah. It says, and I read, I am what? Crucified. Crucified. Next word, wheat. What does that word mean? Together with. So, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but what? Christ liveth in me. Hold on. Where is Christ? He liveth in me. He liveth in me. It says, uh, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son. Of that word is faithfulness. So it's not the believing. It's talking about the constancy, the faithfulness. Yeah? So I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God who what? Loved me. If I live by the faithfulness of him and he loved me, then I can love others. If I live by his faithfulness and he loved me and I live by his faithfulness, then the ability to love others is mine. Because nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ. Christ who loved. So Christ who loved, loves in me today. He that loved, if he's faithful, or since he's faithful, and he's in me, then he loves still today. So my ability to love is not my making of my mind. My ability to love is God himself in me, in Christ. In other words, love is our ability. And God is that ability. Christ Jesus. So, when the Bible says that, uh, uh, look at it again in verse 20. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and what? Gave himself for me. Now, if he gave himself for me and he is in me, then he is giving himself for somebody to me today. Is that clear? Sure. It says, I live by the faith. That's the key word. The word faith there is the word faithfulness. In fact, who has a translation that is not uh, King James? Huh? Uh, Give it a go. Hmm? Um, <laughs> Give it a go. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God. Okay. Throw it away. It's not correct. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. So, because what they've done is they've made it your believing again. So, you live by trusting in. No, 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 no. Who gave himself? Jesus. Jesus. So, that's his faith. So, you live by the faith of. You are alive by his own faithfulness. Not by your believing. It wasn't a case of everything that depends on your believing. No, no, no. You are crucified with him. Yeah? You know, this is the danger of the translations we read. We can conveniently read a translation that puts a burden on us that is not asked to carry. That simple word in and off can be the undoing of many things. Mm -hmm. So it's not faith in. There's a faith in which is you believe in the gospel. But what are you believing that is faithful? You are believing his faithfulness. What is faithfulness? He said he will give himself and he gave himself. That he, that he gave himself is your life. 
You now live by that. You live now. So there was death and there is you beyond death. You live now beyond death by his faithfulness. His faithfulness that made him say, I will love. Then he loved. I will give myself. Then he gave himself. And he is in me. Nevertheless, I live yet on I but Christ in me, right? And if he, see, this is the important logic of redemption. Because he is in me, and he is not twins, but is the same that said, I will love, then loved. I will give, then gave, and he is in me, then he loves through me today. Because he's alive. Think about it this way. I like mathematics. Any universe or parallel world known to man, I would like maths. If, I, if the devil was my teacher, I would still like maths. You don't have to like it. I like it. Huh? So if you hear that Seku died and came back to life, test me with maths. You're like, <laughs> if it doesn't know maths, sounds like Seku, it's not Seku. Right? Then test me with a craziness about Paul. If it's Seku, and it's not crazy about Paul, it's not Seku. Nicodemus can go and sleep. <laughs> Zechariah can sleep. Paul. Some people accuse me of having a Paul cult. Guilty as charged. <laughs> uh, but the Paul cult is the Peter cult, is the Andrew cult, is the Thomas cult. Amen. 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 Guilty as charged. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. Jesus that loved, it is not correct to say he loved only, but because we were raised together, and I'm describing life beyond death, and it's not I that live, but Christ lives in me. Then he that loved still loves. And he loves through me. Is there anybody you could not love? <laughs> Thoughts run through your head, right? <laughs> everybody but. Right? But is there anybody that you could not love? No. Yeah? We're going to come back to this point though. Let me say it again. How did you come out of death? He loved you out of death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does he now use your statements to do? In 2 Thessalonians, when we are preaching, he is calling people. Imagine, you could be wearing stilettos. You know stilettos? Is it, does this they call them stilettos? Heels, heels, sorry. You could be wearing heels. Sorry, sorry. You could be wearing heels. And you could be wearing all, oh, you could be, you could have mas mascara, where do you have mascara? Where is it? Where should my finger go to? Mascara here or there? <laughs> that, yeah, okay. Blush? That's blush. No. Blush is here. Mascara is. Why well, are you confusing me? She's teaching me, Joe. Lashes, good. So you could have lashes and blush and mascara and fa some guys can't even see all that. I'm trying. And foundation, right? And... It is not the foundation that lives in her. It is not the blush. It's not the mascara. Right? Our lashes could be as long as the talons of an eagle. Yes. Our, our lipstick could be copper red or blood of Jesus green or red or whatever the color is. Yeah? But it is who lives in him or her. Amen. Amen. It says, nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Say out loud, Christ, Christ. liveth in, in me. Now, because he lives in you and he is not twins, he will do in you now what he has always done. Now, not tomorrow, now. Now, he can love somebody out of death, he can heal somebody, he can be there for somebody, he can be faithful to somebody through you. It can be because you are the visibility of God. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Where is he? Inside. What do people see? Me. What should I reveal? Him. I am to reveal him because in revealing him, people see him. 
So how do people meet, you know, when the believer or the Christian makes that bold uh, assertion that Jesus is alive, where exactly is he? Where is he? In me. Where is he? In me. He is in me. Can I ask you a question? Is he a shepherd? Huh? God, where is the shepherd? Say it out loud. Where is the shepherd? In me. Uh, is he a teacher? Yes. Where is the teacher? In me. In me. Is he an evangelist? Yes, sir. Where is he? In me. Is he a prophet? Yes, sir. Where is he? In me. Is he an apostle? Yes, sir. Where is he? In me. You know what your trouble is? You try to be the apostle. You try to be the teacher. You try to be the prophet. And you get in his way. But let him be the shepherd in and through you. Because it is together with. See, ministry is not what you do. It is what you do together. It says we are laborers together with Christ. We are laborers together. Why can we be laborers together? Because we were crucified together. We died together. We were buried together. We were raised together. We were made to sit together and we labor together. The difference between you and I is just simply I'm a blazer wearing, you are a lipstick wearing person. You wear lipstick, I wear blazer. But we have the same ability, the same Jesus, the same resurrection, the same redemption, the same Father, the same love, the same ability. Maybe you doubt yours and I don't doubt what I have. That's just the difference. I'm not any better than you are. It is that I recognize that nevertheless, let me give an example. Uh, when I was a lot younger, I never used to like talking to people. My wife would tell you that this man you see on the pulpit talking like there's no tomorrow, if I'm sat down in a corner at home, I could be very mute. That means <laughs> that it is not really that I became talkative. It is the working of an ability. When I stand here, nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Amen. Amen. Now, if Jesus was a cricket lover, I don't like cricket. I mean, if Jesus loved Liverpool, I don't like Liverpool. Yes. <laughs> We're not required to like that. In fact, I'm going to have a go at him if he supports Liverpool. <laughs> I tell you, I have a go at everybody. See, I, I'm in a very enviable position. I support no club. How do you win me? I'm an equal opportunity lover. I just love everybody with harassment. Yes. In, love. In love. In love. Amen. What I'm saying is this. Your personality is your personality. And you've got extra superhuman abilities. Which is Christ in you. You must remember that. Christ in you. That indwelling of Christ in man makes man a superman. Right? He gives to us abilities that normally, biologically, biomechanically, or chemically, cannot be found in us. But we're not talking about biomechanical, chemical, or biological abilities. We're talking about indwelling abilities given in the crucifixion weight, uh, and the dying weight, and the burial weight, and the resurrection weight, and the sitting weight, and the laboring weight. The thing is, we are a formidable team because he has the victory and his victory is mine. Again, he is faithful and he is in me, so his faithfulness is in me. So what do I do if I get out of this place today and I give somebody my word where ministry is concerned and I renege to my promise? I just remember that, nevertheless, I live yet no I, but Christ liveth in me. And I take up the baton one more time and I do it. What will I not do? I won't grovel. I'll be like, eh, me, hear me. How could I? I'm the black sheep of the family of faith. I'm the devil's assistant. In fact, I'm the devil's teacher. I'm his disciple. I train him. I'm his pastor. I'm, I'm this. I'm that. Don't do that one now. Just simply start admitting the truth. He's faithful in me. He loves through me. He cares through me. I fell there, but I'm getting up because we labor together. That's it. Someone says, is that all? See what Paul told somebody that stole in Ephesians. He said, let him that stole steal no more. He didn't say, start saying, ah, I stole, I stole, I stole, 
I stole, I stole, I stole, I stole, I stole. That, that's all. That's all. Nobody. It's like you meet people, Christians, they're trying to deal with uh, addictions. Mm. So, you know, like a guy. Guy sees what guy likes, right? Guy very visual. So, see curves, whatever it is guys like. Say, ah, I will not see curve. 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 I want to see, you want this one for a minute. <laughs> you are in trouble. What you don't want to be conscious of, you don't put in your mouth. Amen. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me now. He lives in me now. As I was talking, was anybody thinking about a Bugatti? No. Why? Until I mentioned Bugatti, you were not thinking about Bugatti. The same way too. Whatever you don't want to repeat, don't talk about. Talk about your realities. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. He's compassionate, so am I. He's loving, so am I. He cares, so am I. He's faithful, so am I. He goes the extra mile, so will I. He prays, so will I. I last the distance. I don't quench in the midst of battle. There's a fire that rages on the inside of me because as he is, so am I on this earth. Hey, somebody said, well, 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 all of that is just semantics. You'll be faking yourself. There's no semantics. This is reality. reality. Reality of the highest order. How many people here are faithful in the local church? You are faithful, dependable. You can be counted upon. Stop lying. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Stop lying. All the people whose hands are not up, put your hand up together. Put your hand up. You, you that you went to the grave with Christ and you rose together with him. How many faithful people say, ho! Oh! Oh! Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Let me see all the faithful people say, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, ho! Oh! Ah. Tell them not to lie. Tell them to get up. Don't lie, don't lie. Get up, get up. Mm. That's the meaning of what I'm saying. Get up, we'll wait. I don't want anybody to practice lying here. The truth is, say with me, I was crucified with Christ I died with Christ was buried with Christ was quickened with Christ was raised with Christ I am seated with Christ I labor together with Christ in seeing him I have seen me I see me by the gospel if help is needed, help is needed. I'm, there. I'm there. Yep, good. Sit down. Now, how do you know you are there? I didn't tell you. Look at your past history. Someone says, No, no, Seku, you don't know me. If you really know me, ah, <laughs> I'm not dependable. That's not true. That's not true. You are dependable. Why? Nevertheless, you live. Yet not you, but Christ liveth in you. Yeah. Can you have 10 disciples? Jesus had 12. He had 70 plus 12. He appeared to 500. Can you have 20 disciples? Yes, sir. No, I didn't ask you to consult your brain. Can you have 20? Yes. 30? Yes. Yeah. Are you available for 500? Yes. So it's, it's two easy peasy. Yes. Five, Ungo. Yes. It's easy peasy. Good. So you can rise up from this place and just be like, oh, easy peasy. I'm going to disciple five people. Yeah. Look at me. Who am I? Stop talking that way. You are crucified. Okay, just let's answer you. You are crucified with Christ. And you died with him. You are buried with him. You are quickened with him. You are raised with him. You are seated with him. And you labor together with him. Hey, what if I don't feel that way? We didn't say you feel together with him. Yeah? Okay. See, Think about it. If they're going to pay your salary tomorrow, if you go to the office, and you don't feel like going to the office, but you want your salary, what do you do? You go. <laughs> That's all. You'll be feeling miserable the way as you are going. But the joy of a salary, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you don't like it, but you still go. You'll be like, eh, eh, you still go. That's, you, none of the big things of life depend on feelings. No, no. Feelings are important, but not that important. Yeah? What if you feel like murdering your husband? It happens. 
<laughs> so, somebody said, this man is anointed. How did he know that? No, relax. <laughs> if you feel like murdering your friend, it is a feeling. Don't dwell there. That's all. Don't build a house there. Don't now form a, an association of those that have felt like murdering their friends. And now tell, now tell yourself, let's talk about the history. How did it start? My own started on a windy Wednesday afternoon. The, it, the snow was falling. The wind vane was about 12 miles per second. Queen Charles was about to marry Princess Diana. <laughs> Whatever. And I'm like, who did that? Who, who did that ape? Who did that ape? Once the was top person, I'm like, who, who has this ape? Hmm? Don't lie against yourself. According to the Bible, the truth is, you are crucified with. We know you. I know. Somebody say, you are talking like you know me. I know you. If you're a believer, I know you well, well, although I just met you today, but I met you through the gospel first. Yeah. All we need to say is, are you a believer? Uh, after I, say, I, say, I know your past. You were crucified together. You died together. So I say, how can you be that emphatic by the gospel? We know you well. Yeah, you know you well. You must know yourself also no longer after the flesh. You must know yourself by this gospel. You are faithful, dependable. You, look, what if you fall? Then get up. The righteous fall seven times. The Lord raises him up. If you like, it could be eight or eighteen. But the Lord raises him up. When does the raising stop? When the believer stops getting up. Hmm? Mm. Yeah? yeah? So, when he said the Lord, the righteous fall seven times, Jesus then came and said, let me explain that to you. Uh, well, if your brother hurts you 70 times seven, so the righteous may fall 70 times seven, but the Lord does what? Raise him up. So, you can build your own camp around the Lord raised me up. Oh, he's not an easy road. We are taking... Who asked you to go on that kind of journey? Believe the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Accept the reality of the word of God. Hallelujah. Accept the reality of God's word, right? Thank you. Yeah, ac accept the reality of God's word. Look at this again. It says in Galatians 2.20. It says, and I read. It says, I... Uh, I, w I, I was crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Let me ask you again, where is Christ? Me. Where is he again? Me. Where is he? Me. Where is he again? Me. Now look at Acts 13. Acts 13. I really need to find a way to... Let me get going now. I think I can go. I can go Acts 13. <clears throat> Acts 13. And I'm going to go all the way to verse 23. I'm in the middle of a thought, so I apologize. Acts 13, 23. Are you there? Of this man's seed. He's talking about David, really. If you read the previous verse, you see David. Of this man's seed has God according to his promise. According to what? His promise, what did he do? Raised unto Israel a what? A savior. Okay. Hold on. Who provided the savior? God did. What did God provide? A savior. How did he provide a savior? He raised a savior. So, the thing about salvation is the savior. The thing about salvation is not how do I feel? How do I not feel? God raised a, a savior, not your feelings. So, he what did God raise again? Savior. What did God raise? A savior. a savior. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy and chapter 1. 2 Timothy, remember, the one that, we're still going to go back to that Acts 13, by the way. So, if you want to put your uh, divider there, I'm going to go there a lot today. 2 Timothy and chapter what? Chapter 1 and verse 2. Where? Come on, 2 Timothy. So, 2 Timothy 1, look at verse 10. What did verse 10 say? Yes. Look at it. Let's read, let's read, let's read, let's read. Verse 9, verse 9, verse 9. <laughs> Who has? 
Okay. Why did he save us? He provided a savior. But look at verse 9. Who has saved us and called us. So what is salvation? The call. So uh, the salvation is the call. Who has saved us? The word and there is the word that means that is to say. He saved us. What I mean by that is he called us. So everybody who is saved is called. Okay, someone says, Hey, ah, you see, only sick of them are called. <laughs> Don't lie, you are called too because you are saved. Hold on, what should you and I trust in? What God raised? What did God raise? A savior. Okay, now, uh, look at this again in verse 9 who has saved us and called us with an only calling. Hold on, so what is by definition what is the nature of God's call? Is holy. Now, if he called you holy, then what are you? Holy. holy by that call. Yeah. The call defines you, not you the call. Right? So it says here, he's called us with an holy calling, not according to our works. So it is not our works that makes our holiness, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given, is a gift. So the purpose of God was a gift that he gave to us. He says, it was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. When you could not impact it. So, in other words, God had a plan. God had a plan. The plan of God from all time has been, there will only be one kind of call. And holy call. And that call will be what is also called salvation. And he did it without asking you and I to participate in an electoral process. He just did it that way and said, I, have a, I will be a savior and my salvation will be also called a holy calling and I will do it by the gospel before the world began. Look at the next verse, verse 10. But it's now made manifest. So what God planned then showed up. Manifest means it is there, not seen. But it's now made manifest, how? By the appearing, so Jesus showed up, of our savior. Go on, Jesus Christ. Acts 13, 23 says he raised the savior. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 identifies that Savior. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. Is it not good that Seku is not the Savior? Amen. So it says, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has... <laughs> what did our Savior do? Verse 10. Who has what? Abolish death. That is the way it wants to be known. What did our Savior do? Abolish death. Gone and brought life. That is to say, immortality to life through the gospel. So what does God do by the gospel? He abolishes death. Mm -hmm. What does God do by the gospel? He brings life, which is immortality, by the gospel. Mm -hmm. So we know what the gospel is. The death, the burial, the, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that a man receives by believing. What God uses it to do is actually to abolish the debt that held the man bound. And then to actually give the man life which is immortality now hold on hold on that is second timothy and chapter one wow well, verse 10. ten yeah second timothy chapter one verse what ten. verse 10. now i want you to see something else something else yeah well, uh he called us by the gospel now um <laughs> look at ephesians uh ephesians in chapter one ephesians chapter one ephesians chapter one and i'm in verse 13. ephesians 1 13. So it says here, it says, in whom you also trusted after that you heard, what did you hear? The word of reality. Reality means what was promised is done. You heard the word of reality. What is that? The gospel of your salvation. So what is the gospel? All them things that God said God will do, God has done it. Reality. Truth. That's what truth, aletheia in the Greek. It means reality. The things promised, the things that were, uh, that were seen in the future, God has done it. And the message was brought to us. Word of truth, message of reality. Okay? So what did you hear again? You heard the message that what God said that God will do, God has done. Ephesians 1.13. It says here, uh, you trusted, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that you believed. What did you do? You believed you were sealed. Did you seal yourself or the sealing happened to you? The sealing happened to you. Which one were you responsible for? To hear and to believe. After you heard and believed, the rest was no longer up to you. 
So, oh, somebody came preaching. I heard. Or I could not have heard. Some, I heard and I might not have believed. But the moment I believe, then something happens to me. I'm sealed. Right? So, I'm sealed. Let's read it on. What am I sealed with? The Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. Verse 13 again. What am I sealed with? What am I sealed with again? I am sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That means the Holy Spirit, which is the promise of God. So, as a believer, I have been sealed. I have been sealed. Hold on. How many times did God seal you? Once. Once. How many times did you believe? Once. Once. See, we'll look at you one more time. <laughs> Are you there? Ephesians 1 and verse 13. Look at it. In whom ye also trusted after sequential, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that, ye what? Past tense, future tense, present tense. Past tense, you believed. You were sealed. Notice, though, it didn't say you kept on believing. So, you don't top up your believing daily. You believed. Been there, done that, have the badge, move on. So, the believer is not in perpetual believing. Someone says, ah, what happens if you stop believing? Not such a concept is never considered. You believe. Then something happens straight away afterwards. You are sealed. Taken out of your hands. You believed, you were sealed. Yeah? It is just, have you believed or not? If you believed, you have been sealed. Sealed is your description. It has, it's like this. Somebody say, what if I didn't come out of nursery? But you came out. <laughs> do, 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 you, do, do you understand? It's like you ate your meal, your lunch. And I said, let's have an argument. What if I didn't eat that lunch? You're like, there's no need for argument. You ate it. <laughs> right? If you wanted an argument, you should have tried not eating. They will have sinned. Why haven't we eaten? Why are we getting into an energy argument? Someone say, well, let me give you an example. I eat this. I, I, someone say, I ate this, uh, cocoa, yeah? What's it? Wrap? Kebab wrap? Yeah, go, okay. kebab wrap. Panda, yeah. So, I ate this kebab wrap. I declare, in the name of Jesus, this kebab wrap should be a longer neck. It's not up to you. Is an autonomous activity of the human body. If you are that interested, you shouldn't have eaten. But I've only, so no, 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 this bread I'm eating, it will not become pot belly. It will not become pot belly. Oh, oh, wait, wait. There are many factors at work that go beyond whether you wanted it to be pot belly or not. You, you, in the great scheme of things, you are not that much of a determinant of a lot. Mm. So I was here. I wonder what would I, I, that water that I drank, it will not satisfy my body. It, it doesn't matter if it's satisfaction to your body. It will be satisfactory. I won't eat it. I won't go to the toilet. I declare it. I won't go to the toilet. I will never go to the toilet again. I will never go. It's not within your control. Eh, really, you will go. <laughs> you will go. <laughs> Other factors are at work. When you don't go, something, an aberration has occurred. Here the Bible says that the moment you believed, you are sealed. It, 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 was, it was an action. You did yours, and God did his. And when he did his, he sealed it. Hey, what, what if I no longer want to believe? Suddenly, Jesus never come. What did God give to us? A doubter? No, a savior. So God did not raise a doubter. He raised a savior. Acts 13, 23. Right? So since what he raised is a savior, we have to go ask the savior, are you still that powerful? It's like this. I came to your house and I said I could help you paint your walls. And you're now coming to ask me, why did your rice burn? <laughs> you're like, why, 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 like, why are you this wicked? Your rice. Say, so ask me about painting. Yeah? Okay, what if you personally did not want Sunak to be the Prime Minister of England? You really aren't that important. There's no other way I have to say, I can say it. You really are not that important. Right? Hey, somebody, I'm conservative. They didn't even ask you to vote. <laughs> Do you understand? They didn't even ask you. The, the people do. So, your own part is actually accept it. <laughs> when you look at it, really, that's the way the gospel is. Just accept it. Yeah? You can remove yourself from it. You can go to uh, Lesotho. That's under a new administration. But in England, Walai, Sunak is yours. Sunak. Most holy Sunak. 
It's yours. You don't even have to like it. How much more this a savior was raised? Is is J is J D C V resume right? Says he is a savior. That's what God raised. Hey, somebody, but what if I you are not the one that God had based it on? You are sealed. Amen. You are sealed. You are sealed. You are sealed. Yeah, you are sealed. Glory to God. You are sealed. In the grand scheme of things, you are sealed. Look at Romans in chapter 4. You are sealed. That, that's all you can say now. We're not asking you, now that you are sealed. What next? He's like, hey, what if I'm not sealed? You should not believe though. <laughs> Romans 4. Are you there? Romans 4, I'm in the... Verse 3. For what said the scripture? A Abraham believed God. Look at the tenses. Abraham did what? Believed. believed. And it was counted. Past tense. Notice, after the believing, what followed? The counting. Hey, what if Abraham did not believe? That is not actually even fact. It's not factual. So, look at it again. Romans 4.3. Uh, uh, it says, Abraham believed. And it was what? Counted unto him for? righteousness look at galatians 3 so it doesn't come up when what if uh, what if there's no what if there what, the, the only thing is abraham could have chosen not to believe galatians 3 verse 6 even as galatians 3 6 even as abraham galatians 3 6 even as abraham believed god and it was counted to him for righteousness or oh, the only part that abraham played is did he believe or not believe it is not a topping up of his believing. Now, what if, what if I don't feel like I believe tomorrow? That is not within the parameters of what the scripture covered. Because what was raised was not a doubter. What was raised was a savior. Amen. And the savior is not you. <laughs> you are raised with the savior, but you are not that savior. So the savior saves perfectly. Amen. Amen. The savior do what? Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter. And chapter 1. And uh, look at verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Through what? First Peter 1, 2. Through what again? First Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Through the sanctification of the Spirit. So, where do we find our sanctification? Yeah, it's of the Spirit of God. Right? Of the Spirit of God. So our sanctification is not in our feelings. Our sanctification is in the Spirit of God. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Which we read in 2 Timothy a while ago. Actually means the same thing as salvation. Now look at Hebrews 7. So God raised the Savior. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. And verse 25. What did God raise again? A Savior. Acts 13.23. Look at Hebrews 7, 25. 25 says, <laughs> wherefore, are you there? He yes, is what? Amen. Underline that. Those three mighty words. Wherefore what? He is able also to what? He is able also to save them that to the, to the what? He is able to save to the what? Who has another translation? Who has a non-KJV? What's yours? KJV. Hmm. What's yours? What's under non KJV? I'll be, I'll be more. Yeah. What's yours? Uh, Amplify. Amplify. What does it say? Uh, therefore, he is able to save to the utmost completely, perfectly, finally. Hold on. So the uttermost means completely, perfectly. What again? Finally. finally. Why is he able to do that? He's a savior. That means he does his job well. So Hebrews 7.25, it says, uh, Hebrews 7.25, Wherefore is able to save to the what? Uttermost, which means perfect, complete, right? That come unto God by him, seeing he ever what? What is the purpose of the resurrection of Jesus? It is my proof that he saves perfectly. That he saves what? Completely. That he saves what? Finally. Okay. What, what is my what what do I look at to know that he's alive? So that fact of believing that Jesus is alive or that God raised him from the dead, it does quite a lot of things. In that believing, 
that you know that God raised him from the dead. That fact. Right? Look at it again. Hebrews 7, 25. It says, uh, where am I again? 25? It says, uh, he's able to save to the uttermost. Notice this is his ability. The ability of the Savior is that he saves. Should that be difficult? If we call him a painter, what should he do well? Paint. If we call him uh, an economist, what should he do well? Fiscal policies and economic policies and all that. But here, we are told that he saves to the uttermost. He saves to the uttermost. That is his ability. Notice who doesn't come into the equation. The person that doesn't come into the equation happens to be you. He doesn't say, ah, except the person doesn't waver. No. He says, yeah, look at verse 25. Wherefore, he's able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever, ever what? Live to make what? Intercession. He ever live to make what? Intercession. Let me have your attention. In reading the scriptures, what does he do? He ever... Read it again. Read it, read it. Verse 25. Why is he able to save to the uttermost? Huh? What does he do first? He is able to save. Save. save now. What is he able to do? To How? To what degree? Uttermost. What does that mean? Complete? Complete. Final? Perfectly. Perfectly. Okay. Now, uh, what is it that allows him to save completely? I mean, Hebrews 7.25. What allows him to save perfectly, thoroughly, completely? What allows him to? He always... He always leaves. What does it mean to be alive in the case of Jesus? That he was dead, but he's raised. So, why, what is his ability to save complete, perfect, final? The resurrection. Yeah? What else is that resurrection called in Hebrews 7.25? Read slowly intercession the trouble is what do you think intercession is <laughs> mm? Mm? what do you think intercession is Prayer. Huh? Prayer. yeah okay <laughs> okay one more time why is he able to save he's a savior what is his proof as a savior he's alive what is his aliveness called? Intercession. intercession. What is intercession? Oh, look at the word. What does the word intercede? Don't get all church on me now. Okay, okay. Somebody's getting close. What does inter... Huh? Okay, intercede. What does it mean? Come between. That means, hold on. Intercede means come between. Hmm? What was man's problem? Death. Death. What does Jesus bring? Life. Life. How does he come between? What is he coming between? Death. death and man. So, how does he come between death and man? By dying in the death and rising from the dead. Right? So, when he died in the death and rose from the dead, he's now the savior of the man. So, he is in between as the intercessor who is the savior. Who is the resurrected one. Hold on. So the life of Jesus is the intercession or the coming in between man and death. What is the salvation? He saves from death, he brings into life. Let's do that one more time. Uh, actually, in the Bible, intercession does not mean what many people think it means. Somebody in the general means Jesus will now tell God. Now say, ah. Oh, let them swim under my blow. Say, you made a mistake. Dive, 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 dive now. D dive. So we please the Lord, the Lord, the Jesus. Well, such a beautiful tone or tune, melody. If I own up to it, such a risky move. Ordinary demon, demon that can be wasted. Yeah? No. Somebody said, ah, the reason why you don't eat uh, pork is because the demons, they have to go into the pork, into the pig, and the pig run into the water. 
So we should stop drinking water. Let's be logical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I admit that we should stop, yeah, we should stop taking pork because the demon entered the pig. And the oil in the water, we should all end up drinking, not drink water. And I say, hmm, scholar. <laughs> there is no scholar there. You better eat the pork if you like the pork. I personally don't like pork. I prefer lamb. And I don't like, I don't eat red meat. It's always brown. It's fried. That's my wife, there, Olati. She'll tell you, I, all I take is fried meat because they told me I shouldn't eat red meat. It's not the same thing. Red meat, don't you see when you cut the meat, it's red. Yeah. And when you fry it, it's brown. So I take brown. If that doesn't satisfy you, that's you. <laughs> it satisfies me. <laughs> it allows me to eat the things I eat. Praise God. Yeah. Abraham, no, don't take that to the gospel, let anything know. That, <laughs> that was an expensive joke. You know, I say, ah, I saw a man of God today that described to me what red meat. No, I didn't. <laughs> but nonetheless, I take brown meat only. <laughs> Hebrews 7, 25. Yeah? Wherefore is able to save to the to the uttermost. Who does he save? Them. Who does he save again? Them. To the uttermost, complete, final, thorough. Right? That come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth. That is life, is his intercession. What does he do? He comes between man and death. We read before how he abolished death. That's his intercession. He abolished it. He came between man. He says that he will deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Right? So he has his intercession is his coming in between you and death. Right? In the final analysis, you win. You do. <laughs> you do. Right? Even if your body or mine, let me use mine. So some people get superstitious. Even if my body were buried in the dust of the earth, I'll rise again. Jesus guarantees that. Amen. Amen. What does Jesus do? He guarantees that. So he saves completely. Look at Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and verse 14. For by one offering, what has he done? By what? One by one offering. How many? One, he has what? Perfected forever them that are sanctified. What has he done? Perfected forever them. How do you describe me? I'm perfected forever as a sanctified. What does it mean to be sanctified by God? Perfected forever. Amen? You, what, what, what does it mean again? You are perfected forever. You are perfected forever. Right now, this is quite interesting. So he has perfected forever. I want to run past you something before I stop. Now, uh, because I have to stop shortly. The thing is, our Savior, God raised the Savior. If I look at Hebrews eight one, let me read something. Hebrews eight one, Hebrews chapter eight verse one. Now, verse one. Now, now of the things which we have spoken. That means of all the things written in the book of Hebrews, of the things which is spoken, this is the sum. Right? Uh, the Greek word means this is the main point. Right? This is the principal idea. Listen, what is the main point? We have such a high priest. So what is the sum total of what the scripture is trying to tell you? You have a particular High priest in Hebrews 7 is able to save to the uttermost. Why he ever live it? So God raised the Savior, who is a high priest, whoever lives to see to it that you never perish. Never, never. That is the song, that is the principle. To fail to arrive there is to have a premature birth or no birth at all. Now, listen carefully. How did you get perfected? high priest now hold on look at second or first peter first peter chapter two first peter chapter two and i'm in verse nine <clears throat> verse five really first peter chapter two verse five you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house 
a holy what? What are you? A holy priesthood. Why are you called the holy priesthood? Because you are saved by a high priest. It says you are a holy. The word holy, particular, distinct. Right? So it says you are a holy priesthood. Go on. Verse 5. First Peter 2, 5. A holy what? A holy priesthood. Why? To offer up, to offer up what again? To offer up what again? Spiritual sacrifice unto acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So, what are we? We are a holy priesthood. What do we do? We offer spiritual sacrifices. Right? Why? It's acceptable. Listen carefully. Does God want sacrifice? Mm? Mm? Ah. First Peter 2. Read First Peter 2. Verse 5. Slowly, slowly, that's how you understand this thing. First Peter 2, 5. Can we go again? You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up what? Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to who? God. How? So, does God want sacrifice from you? Yes. yes. What kind of sacrifice does he want from you? Spiritual. Now, remember. So, look. How did you become saved? Jesus offered a sacrifice. By one offering himself. So, Jesus became a minister. In his ministry, you are secure forever. Now, that ministry makes you a minister. You are a holy priest. You now offer spiritual sacrifice to God. Remember two sessions or whatever ago, where I was talking in Acts 17. Does God need, hold on, who do we offer spiritual sacrifice to? God is acceptable to God. Acceptable. I'll ask you a tricky question. Is acceptable to God. In Acts 17, does God need sacrifice? No. no. <laughs> right? Who needs sacrifice? Man. So the spiritual sacrifice, who needs it? Man. Man. God the, God the collector on behalf of man. Remember when we were explaining that there are things that you will normally need to give to people. You don't give to people because of the love challenge. So what does God do? God says bring sacrifice. Why does he say bring sacrifice? So you can offer it for your brother. So that your brother can be taken care of. God himself, as per personality, does not need it. So we offer spiritual sacrifice. Who needs it? Man. That's the person that needs it. Hold on. Somebody says, oh my God, you did my head in. Go back to Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, are you there? Are you there? Look at verse, uh, where are we? Verse 1. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never, someone say never? never? Can never with those sacrifices, listen carefully, those sacrifices which they offer, what? Year by year, make the commas what? Perfect. Okay. Now, I want you to see it again. It says in verse 4, what's it describing? Look at verse 4. For it is not that the blood of boots and gold should take away sin. <laughs> Look at verse 5. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, right? It says, now, what can he not take away? Sins. So, where is a sacrifice stupid? When, what do I have in mind? If I'm trying to take away sin, sacrifice is totally, totally antithetical no useful devilish demonic earthly sensual bad impure insane mad crazy <laughs> whatever you got it what hold on so sacrifice for sin god does not want sacrifice that will bless another person god wants <laughs> you get the difference if i come to him with a sacrifice for my sins i'm actually in unbelief because my high priest, by his life, is the guarantee. By one sacrifice, 
is perfected me forever. And that makes me a priest, a holy priest. What do I now do? I now offer. What do I offer? Spiritual sacrifices. It's acceptable unto God. Who needs them? My brethren. My brethren need it. Oh, go to Ephesians. Because you must get this. After all my redemptive stuff and all that kind of stuff, it must get here. Get here. Sacrifice. Uh, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Be you therefore imitators of God as dear children. What are we to do? Follow us. The word follow us means imitate, copy. Why can we copy him? We are his children. What are we? Their children. Look at verse 2. Walk in. Walk in what? So if I copy God, what will you find in me? I'll be walking in love. As Christ. Also as loved us. And as? And as what? And as what? So when Christ loved us, what did he do? He gave himself. If I love you, what do I do? I give myself. Is that clear? Yeah. So watch carefully. Let's read verse 2. He's given himself for us. Who did he give it for? For who? Who is the beneficiary? Us. He says, he gave himself for us an offering and a... So Christ offering and sacrifice to God. Who was it for? Us. Who was the recipient? Also. It's not that Jesus came and said, ah, God, I know you are so angry. You look at man. Man so despicable and this and that. And God says, I want to shoot them. I'm going to shoot my holy bazooka. And God, Jesus now says, don't do it now. Okay, turn your AK-47 spiritual to me. Take me out. And God now says, ah, I've been looking for somebody to shoot. I just must shoot somebody. And just now I say, ah, ah, can you not change your mind? And God says, I know. I just must shoot somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's the way many put it of salvation. That's not true. Man is the one that needed a sacrifice. And Jesus... God in the flesh was made a sacrifice for us. Who brought it? God. John 1, 29, John said, Behold, the Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. Whose Lamb? God's Lamb. So God brought the Lamb. But at Genesis 22, it says, On the mountain of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh is called. So, the, on the mountain of the Lord, men will see visions of what God will bring. And what God brought is called the love of God, which is God as a man, making himself a sacrifice for man. Then he, he did that as our high priest. He brought it to us to satisfy our enmity towards God. Then he now tells us we are to offer the same sacrifices to our brethren. What sacrifice now? To minister to them, to love them, to nurture them, to care for them, to be there for them. Because God doesn't need anything from man. You didn't understand that. He doesn't need anything. Even our service. So as I'm preaching now, I'm not doing God a favor. At best, I'm doing you a favor. And thank God I'm doing me a favor because I'm hearing myself too. Now, my point is, I'm not doing God a favor. I'm not making God better. I'm not making God worse. Not at all. But my sacrifice, which is my service, is for you. Now, you also, in the sacrifice of Jesus, you learn to understand that you have been made sacrificial too. You actually are called a holy priesthood. You bring spiritual sacrifices, which is for us. Which is what God wants. What God wants is for the benefit of another man. Amen. Yeah, what God wants is for the benefit of another man. Look at 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. And it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Are you there? 2 Corinthians 5. Are you there? 2 Corinthians 5. So if I ask you one more time. Is Jesus a high priest? Yes. yes. Are you a priest? Yes. A holy priest? Yes. Do you bring sacrifice? Yes. A spiritual sacrifice? Yes. Do you bring it continually? Yes. yes. Jesus, does he offer sacrifice continually for sin? No. no. This is important. Who is the one that can offer sacrifice for sin? Only Jesus. Jesus. How many times? By one. At one and for all. 
However, our sacrifice today, because when he, remember, we died together, we were quickened together, we rose together, we sat together. So when he rose as our high priest, we also rose as priests too. When he served us, that enabled us to copy him, walk in law, and serve somebody else. So salvation rescues a man from selfishness and says, whatever it takes, however long, by whatever mileage, whatever claim on me, I'll be there for you. I will go to hell and high water. I'll be there for you as a bulwark of strength, a defense. I'll be there. I'll be there. I will not actually abandon you because the love of God compels me. I'm there, there, there. So the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of yourself together as the manner of some is. If you read that Hebrews 10, verse 14 says, he has perfected us forever. Then further down in verse 25, he now says, don't forsake the assembly of yourself together. Because those he has perfected need to come together. Yeah? Those to minister to the perfected are the perfected. Those he has perfected have what it takes, the equipment, to minister to the needs of another person. Hallelujah. Many times people are looking for Jesus to do what he wants to do through his sins. So people are often looking for Jesus personally to individually show up before them for what he has said another believer should copy the footsteps of Jesus for. I need to say that slowly. What was it that Paul told the church? It says in Ephesians 5.1, it says, uh, therefore what you do is you follow God. As a dear child, in verse 2, walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself. As he loved us, he gave himself. So if I walk in love, I'll give myself for you. Amen. So often, let me say slowly, many times the love that people want as a believer is actually the service of another believer that is missing. Yeah? So many people... Um, you know, many people, uh, <laughs> a singer, like, Darling Jesus, Darling Jesus, Oh my darling Jesus, You're a wonderful love. Eh, eh, I love you. Mm, 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 darling. You just need another believer to tell darling. <laughs> Jesus, darling Jesus. <laughs> From where to where? <laughs> darling, <no? laughs> when you need companionship, you need another believer. Someone says, No. Jesus is everything to me. I know. <laughs> but that's not what he said. What he said was, somebody needs to walk in love towards you. I give you the gifts of companionship. I give you the gifts of being there for you. Yeah? See, if believers don't walk in love, it will look like Jesus is inactive. Because where is he? In the saint. What is he? He's acting. He lives in us. I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Remember what we read at the beginning? I'm a co-laborer. First Corinthians 3.9. We are co-laborers together with God. So God the laborer. You no know, many people are used to God the Savior, but he's a laborer too. God the chief laborer is found in the saints that labor. Who do we labor over? Fellow saints. So, let me say it again. Is God merciful? Yes. yes. But check it out. Anytime you feel that God is not merciful, it's because believers around you have abandoned you. Or they have been there for you, but they are not enough for you. Mm. You know when you love a cat? And the cat won't come home. And they say, leave cat alone. Ah, you don't see what I see. Now, at that point in time, you are setting yourself up for trouble. Because cat will do what cat does. Mm, cat. Find cat. But cat does what cat does. But we find safety in the service, in the ministry that is offered by the Lord Jesus through you, through me, to another believer. You are actually a priest. You are a priest of God. You are a priest of God. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Listen carefully. If God wants a sacrifice, who does he have in mind? A human being. Right? Sure? Look at that Genesis. Look at Genesis. Somebody ought to give me the placard and all the stuff. 
Ah, 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 oh, Master D is just in love this morning. Oh, this evening. <laughs> Genesis and chapter 4. Stop. Does. Oh, what do you want in Genesis 4? I didn't even know I still had time. Ah. Hey, hey. Look at Jeremiah. Look at Jeremiah. When Genesis 4, um, how many places are your aunt? Genesis 4 and Jeremy. Jeremiah chapter 7. Somebody say 7. seven. So Jeremiah, Jeremiah is after Isaiah. I want you to get here fast. This I'm going to tell you where it is. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 7. You there? Jeremiah chapter 7. Are you done? Yes. Either? Okay. Look at verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 21. Look at me. Let me have your attention. Your attention. Your eyeball. Let's eyeball each other. When Isaiah, oh, sorry, Jeremiah. When Jeremiah wrote what Jeremiah wrote, had Jesus come? No. Okay, good. So let's, so let's now read. 21. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and what? Eat it. My friend, does eat it. Is that in the Bible? Yes. Yeah. Burnt offering? Sacrifice, eat it. Hold on. So who is the bond offering for? Man. Who are the sacrifices for? Man. Somebody is like, hey, I made a pastor to be that said, we are sacrificed swallowing people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Now, are you in verse 21? 22. Why did he say that? Read verse 22. Slowly. For I speak not to your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifice. Eh? Is that in the Bible? Yes. So did God want zilch, nada, zero, any burnt offering or sacrifice from anybody? No. If people bring it, who is it for? The people to eat it. For the people. In other words, sacrifice therefore in the Bible properly is ministry. Do you understand? So why is the Bible full of sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice? It's not sin. It's because of love work. You get it now? Yes, the Bible is a book full of bring sacrifice. Bring, so that somebody else can eat. <laughs> that man is laughing. <laughs> it don't on you at last. Uh, see, why must you be sacrificial? You are the reason why somebody else will find Christianity exciting. That's it. Mm. You are what makes Christianity worth it for somebody else. Yes. Mm. When somebody said, I've had a good year, they're describing you. You are somebody's good year. Amen. Amen. Imagine you looking at somebody say, for the next decade, I'll be everything. Somebody say, don't be that, be that. <laughs> Try. Try. Be there. Hey, what if I don't feel that way? Uh -uh. Didn't I tell you about when you don't feel like collecting your salary, but you still go to collect it? <laughs> so, that didn't stop anything. So, I don't feel like that. You know, I told people, you're like, your hand should go up, you want to slap, you just stop and say, ah, love you, hug. Because mm. you're a kicker, I love. <laughs> uh, I was misbehaving for when my hand was coming, I ah, uh, love you. <laughs> Are you remote controlled? Is somebody controlling you from your village? So you can stop, you can stop mid-hair. Why that hand? Someone says, no, he's the devil. Then we say, ah! <laughs> I wasn't there, ow! Oh. Like taking notes, so I'm capable of doing this kind of stuff. I didn't even know. No, no, no. your hand can stop mid hair. Yeah. The hand that strikes can become the hand that loves. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, no, say, ah, this year they will never find me in service. You're like, ah, what? stop that, Miss Stop that. What, 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 what do you mean? They'll find me. I'll be there. I'll be, but I'll open the door. I'll be the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be the door. I'll be the door of sacrifice in this church. I'm sacrificial. Come on. Mm. Why? Hey, I'm trying to score points. Forget it. You're not trying to score any point. Jesus is the point scored already. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, God himself said, you see all your burnt offering? Collect everything together. Gather, eat it. And they'll have me say, hey, we should eat. Because they had a view about a very hard Al Capone God. You know God that you must say to. So I'll say, hey, 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 hey. You do not give to God. And you don't want your arm to break. <laughs> Whatever God doesn't collect by arm breaking, 
So if you don't give it to God normally, your leg will break. If the leg doesn't break, you lose the job. So far, you didn't honor me. My dear friends, you just described the devil. Many people's Jehovah is the devil. It is in Christ Jesus you come face to face with God. In fact, people like Jeremiah know God more than many Christians today. Jeremiah said, uh, oh, yeah. He said, this is the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. All your burnt off. Is it burnt off? Someone say, God is the one asking for it. And somebody beside them is dying. No. God. It's like this. Come to church. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. And God is like, what am I going to do with that? Who we'll ask you to love anybody? There is a brother or sister beside you. Sing it to that person. Someone said, I like this sermon. So that sister had been eyeing. That's it. I was like, sister, it's just the love of God. Oh. I love you. Do no, you no, understand? No. no, 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 no. The Bible says, if I don't love man that I see, how could I talk about loving God? Moreover, God didn't ask you to love him. No. He just wants you to believe his love. But who are you to love? Somebody else. That's your love for somebody else. Is what it was explained in Genesis to Malachi as sacrifice. Yes, sir. It is to be eaten. Mm. Paul said, For this cause, many are sickly mm. and many die. Prematurely. Why? Because in the Corinthian church, they were not waiting for one another, they were not sharing. But we share ministry, we share love. Imagine you and I just saying, We're going to divide Japan. Take off, I take off. Ten years time, we meet again. We meet in the center. I mean, I like Japan. <laughs> we still get there. But don't even do Japan first. Do your local church. To say, you know what? Every time this church opens this year, I will out attend the opening of the door. <laughs> hey, but I can't promise that. I don't have control of my time. Start. Promise it. Let's leave the rest. You'll catch up later. Mm. Amen. Amen. Glory. Christianity, let me tell you. You are what makes somebody's year exciting. You are somebody sat there looking at me is the excitement of somebody's year this year. You are what somebody has been saying. I wish that God could just be that I could know God in a tangible way. They're describing you. Because you will be there to unveil, unfold, explain, and enumerate. You'll be there to love. People that are in the midst, I even noticed. That's even naturally, when human beings are in, when a human, when a man loves a cat, you know when a man loves a cat, the universe is sorted. If they say, ah, we're going to kill you tomorrow, it's a love, love, love that I feel. Yeah? They're like, I'll kill you. They're like, no, I'm in love. Why? Because that is what creates the excitement. Love. But that's even romantic love. I'm not talking about romantic love. I'm talking about the love of God. The Lord. Imagine all of us ganging up on one another to just love each other tired this year. Just tired. Now, you know what? It, it is, uh, where come, is there any, is there any known African here? No. Okay. We're all African. Just you and I, don't worry. All this, all this, this, this lot. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, huh? <laughs> I happen to know your name, this man. Uh, look at him. Now, the point is this, right? All I've said is that to see how Jesus can be somebody's completion, no matter what, that's salvation. That no matter what, to the last man standing, he saves completely. He either saves. Or he doesn't save at all. And when he saves, he saves completely. Completely. You know who we are describing? We are describing you in Christ. Because nevertheless you live. Yet not you. Somebody says, Seku, I'm looking out yonder. I don't quite see it. Baradisto prekete. Shigagalasta. Sivani androkte. Krapto kovezeziski dradishka. Cravela dos of figestis, semenundre freketos, sucorodoja fectica calidios, fenambra taca, elegista, elegista sionande prefiquis, endre beco, 
Endre Beko, for your heart is to dwell upon that which in the Holy Writ has been spoken about you. Not in that which your mind, your brain, and your comprehension has painted to you because of experiences in the days gone past. But put your focus and put the energy of your heart to see as the Lord sees, to know as He knows, for what joy, what thrill, what triumph for the mind, the heart, the soul that is caught up in that note of victory. Rest in the Lord, not in circumstances manufactured by man. Rest in His peace. Rest, yea, rest in the Lord. And go forth, not as the days gone past, but go forth, enabled of God, equipped of the Spirit, energized by His life. Ye go forth with your hand made strong and your feet made stable. Go forth with the light of revelation in your eyes, illumination lighting the inner fire. Go with the Spirit of God, for the Spirit of God will show you where one man yearns, yearns to experience the compassion and the love of God, for this love will well up within thee and rise up like mighty torrents and flood out of you. As you give yourself, yea, not to think like a normal, natural old man, but to think supernaturally. Yea, think about the Lord, his work, his indwelling, his spirit, his ability. Think ye upon the Lord and not upon that which man says you can or cannot do. For the Lord is mighty and strong within thee. For there shall arise in this day, in this hour, in many places, in far-flung reaches of this earth, Men with the revelation of redemption, revelation of the light, revelation of the glory of God, revelation of what the Lord has wrought by spirit in dwelling those that believe. Many shall rise and they shall shake off the shame of a time gone past, lift up their head because they've caught the vision of the Lord. They will work the boldness and a certainty that man does not give to man, but the mighty God to men does give. So rejoice ye in this hour and let your sorrow turn to dancing and let your despair turn to certainty in the midst of apparent defeat. For the Lord, strong and mighty in you, brings to pass that which he shows you by his word. So decide and say, I will live in the light of revelation knowledge. I will walk in the fullness of that which his spirit shall show to me per time. And I will walk on, yea, walk past what man says and walk in the fullness of the indwelling Lord. And they shall arise around you, others that see the light of God in you, and they will act on the same, act the same way, until communities of love shall be started. Hey, communities of love where all hatred once held the sway. And you will not have to say, I've run out of fire, I've run out of energy, I've run out of power. For what propels thee is resurrection, ability, and might. Stand in this hour. And say, he's strong in me, is mighty in me. He's strong in me to bring his own work to come to pass. For he works in you, he works in you to will to do of his good purpose and plan. Yea, in this day, in this hour, many are rising with their illumination intact. They will see by the Spirit of the Lord. They will walk free of the yoke and the bondage of selfishness and walk on in the Spirit and power of the Lord. Who are these ones? They are they that have seen the truth, heard the truth. Men that think and reason and walk in the light of that which the Spirit of God will unfold to not one, not two, not three, not four, but many pockets of men. They will rise above the ceiling that the flesh doth set and they will move on into the glory and the power of the Lord. Their feet on the ground, but their eyes shall see the living God. And many shall look at them and say, those that have come to make things right have come. They've come, yea, from the very midst of the shadowy darkness they've come. They've come with the light. They've come with the truth. They've come with the message. They've come with the compassion of God. They come with the service of God in their hearts. Yea, assemblies shall be taken over by men that have seen and tasted the reality of the compassion of our God and Father. Men will go, yea, they will shake 
off what used to be and they will embrace what is reality now for the reality of god like a mighty garment or robe oh his people doth wear and one man shall put on a candle that will light the fire of another that will light the fire of another yea what is this that i see but all armies all communities of men whose candle are lit with the glory of heaven whose candle are lit with heaven the fire with the glory of the living god who are they they, they are those whose fire the world cannot snuff out they are they that will not be controlled by bitterness or selfishness anymore but the world come in the fullness of god divine the walk on in the fullness of that which will unveil and reveal per time and they will walk on and say i'm ready if there's a need the ability that precedes the need and they will walk on in the fullness of that and many 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 shall see and walk in their light and say i shake off all that of the world also and i walk in the fullness of what i see in thee and then i'm in arm the form a mighty wall a wall of light a wall of glory a wall of compassion the wall of power, a wall of illumination, and many shall love the ministry of the Lord. Walk in the light of the priesthood that God has given. And many, many that sit here, many, many that stand here, supernatural abilities will be given. Yea, supernatural equipment will be awoken. Supernatural endowments will have free flow and have a supernatural manifestation. Oh, a whole assembly to be spoken of them. These are strong as God Himself. They will walk in the fullness of God divine and the will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God will be done upon the earth in this day and in this hour, right in the midst of the darkness. The darkness and the gloom that covers the nations, that covers the earth. The glory of God, the light of God, the light of a supernatural will be in mighty manifestation still. And they will rise and they will go forth. They will teach with clarity. They will speak with illumination and many will have their fire lit again candle 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 will light candle men will be ablaze with the glory of heaven and in the place where they have mourned all mourning shall give way to singing for they shall minister with the strength that god gives so walk in the light rejoice in the lord rejoice in the power of his might yea humbly declare his ability is mine today he strained his mind today. He can use me, will use me, walk through me, flow through me. And right in the presence of those that have disdained them, many shall shine as the stars of the heavens and walk in the fullness of God. In the fullness of God, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's rise to our feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say together, my local church, has a gift in me. I am a gift.